Hello everyone, I want to thank uh, Rethink Bayon team and Paul Garcia for the invitation. I'm glad to be here and share some of my thoughts and reflection on the teams that are engaged in the Rethink Bayon design competition. Uh, I will start with quickly introducing myself so you know a little bit of the context and uh, my research and uh, my work also at NYIT. My name is Marcella Del Signore and I'm an associate professor uh, of architecture and the director of the MS in Architecture, Urban and Regional Design at the New York Institute of Technology School of Architecture and Design. I'm both an architect and urbanist, but also I'm an, I'm an educator, scholar, and the principal of Extopia, a design research practice that explores the intersection of architecture and urbanism with technology and the public, social, and cultural realm. My research focuses on the intersection of architecture with the urban scale, with a particular focus on technology. Also, my work operates on multiple scales, looking at the interdisciplinary aspect of public space and urban development through the lens of digital processes and small scale interventions and prototypes as testing devices for the construction of the contemporary city. I'm interested in testing the relationship between the built environment, cities and communities. The notion of prototyping has been at the core of my research and I've been investigating the potential of small scale projects to test user participation while addressing larger urban issues and possibilities of long term integration in the urban environment. I see prototyping and testing as an integral part of design praxis and as a formal negotiation between process and product. I started teaching at NYIT in 2017 and before I taught at Tulane School of Architecture for many years. At NYT, I've been the uh, co-coordinator of the visualization sequence, integrating digital technologies within the curriculum. Also, I've been focusing uh, uh, and I've been teaching also design studios that look at the connection of multiple scale in design, focusing on the notion of interscalarity, so from the scale of the material to the scale of the city, um, as for instance, I think the Rethink Bayon initiatives that looks, uh, that looks at housing as an important uh, urban component uh, for urban development and for also the future of our cities. My work has focused on urban prototyping and in particular how we can redefine urban development through scalable prototypes. In this framework, and I also I see this in the framework of the, of the competition and the Rethinking by Young initiative, I see open source design as a very important part for city making, addressing needs for long-term changes. I'm very interested in strategies that employ small scale network design implementation as a means for large scale transformation. This project navigates both top-down and, and, and bottom-up strategies, combining the best of both. Also, this project utilizes interim design as testing ground for user participation, while mediating the embedded urban dynamics that address the larger issues of long-term long integration in our cities. The notion of replication and direct participation become critical components in these game-changing strategies. Number one, the process of prototyping. Long-term solutions can often be jump-started by building and redefining quick working models, like the Bayon competition, for instance. Prototypes are meant to test out ideas. Within this context, prototypes can be developed and displayed to solicit feedback from residents, city officials, and stakeholders. Number two, the requirement to replicate. One requirement for prototype development is the potentiality for replication in a variety of environments capable of ensuring that the design are adaptable and applicable to many different contexts. By opening up the design source code and then open source design, materials, instructions, and other resources necessary to recreate each project and especially projects of this nature can really catalyze a new global community for sharing urban design work. 
And third, cities adopting ideas. How we can recreate and create a long lasting path for projects to be developed and implemented. I see the Bayonne competition as a catalyst initiative to structure and organize the potential of design needs to address urban conditions that are not unique to Bayonne itself, but start to address large neighborhoods, cities, and metropolitan scale. In addition, bottom-up initiatives can evolve into long-term transformation initiated in cooperation with the city administration. There are many urban experimentations around the globe that start as a series of projects utilizing the development of small scale design objects to address, address large scale issues. By fostering those models, we are able to develop direct bottom up participation, while the design strategies address repli replicable large scale and long term implementation to improve the intelligence of our cities. This approach capitalizes on bottom-up participation to be a powerful agent of change, able to embody open source strategies as an instrument of collective empowerment. How can we bring together residents, industry, and policymakers to improve our cities through bottom-up processes? A series of projects have been developed within this framework, harvesting a fertile ground for future change representing solution and the possibilities of defining operational parameters. What these approaches all have in common is the utilization of bottom-up power to take advantage of open source design to act faster than top-down administration. A common denominator is the development of a strategic framework that directs participation and finally serves the large-scale long-term urban projects. The Bayon competition, I think, is also able to make us to reflect on the relationship between housing and sustainable urban development. This is a major challenge across the globe, as we all know, and not all is a challenge for Bayon. There are many definitions of sustainability as, one of, as the one uh, from the World Commission on Environment and Development. Sustainable development means meeting the needs of the present without compromising with the ability of future generations to meet their own need. Uh, also define what sustainability will, means for housing specifically. Number one, ensuring there is a roof overhead for the housing disadvantage. Two, ensuring housing is more coefficient and eco-efficient. And assuring housing is well located and is part of a project to improve locational amenity. Sustainable housing means housing which contributes to community building, to social justice, to economic viability at the local level. Current housing affordability is seen how to make housing economically viable while also reflecting on issues of sustainability and long-term development. The issue of housing affordability and sustainability, I think, is a uh, multi-dimensional multi issue. There are many factors associated with housing affordability, like interest rates, income levels, construction costs, land supply, and housing prices, as we all know. All of these factors are completely intertwined. Design plays a very important role in providing a critical framework for sustainable and housing development. Design can reduce the house cost, infrastructure costs, reduce ecological footprint, and could increase social sustainability and quality of life. Even though we tend to think that housing and affordability as, a, as distinct, in reality, they are strongly linked. Although we can treat these two issues in isolation that are interrelated and we are likely to achieve success in one without succeeding in other. I think we are all big players in this and, uh, and I think also that believing in the power of design, we can change things. And this is what I often tell my students. I would like to end my reflection with a quote from uh, uh, Jamie Lerner, 
which is the former mayor of Curitiba, Brazil, but also is a tactical urbanism. The lack of resources is no longer an excuse not to act. The idea that action should only be taken after all the answers and resources have been found is a sure recipe for paralysis. The planning of a city is a process that allows for corrections. It is supremely arrogant to believe that planning can be done only after every possible variable has been controlled. So this quote encourages us to act, even though without resources or limited resources, we can act in the city in different forms. Thank you.